Welcome to this session, Moby Max Social Studies. I'm Robin Dixon, and I will be giving you a brief overview today of the social studies part of Moby Max. And this program is designed for grades K through eight for social studies. Within the social studies, there are four domains, history, geography, government, and economics. And within this program, there are interactive maps and other features. So we're going to start by logging in as a student first so that you can see what this looks like for a student. And then we'll log into the teacher side and I will show you the customization features within Moby Max for social studies. So we are going to begin by signing in as a student. Please notice that that is the first tab underneath sign in as a student. When a student signs in, he or she will get to a screen and that says welcome. And at the top, there are four choices for the student. The first one is four books, the last one on its side. This shows all the programs that have been assigned to that student. The next tab are the lessons that have been assigned to that student. You'll see two math and a language. You will then see the two balloons that takes you to rewards, games, certificates, badges. It's the fun place where students um, cash in their points and cash in their hard work for rewards. The next tab that looks like a little um, speaker symbol um, is announcements and tasks and messages. And the final one with the sunglasses and mustache, if the student wants to change their frame color, they can do that. You'll notice by clicking that it changes the color. So let's go back to the books, which takes the student to the home screen. And we are looking at the social studies section. Notice that there says two minutes. I preset this for five minutes and we are working through this program. And so there are two minutes left for this student. Now, when you get into social studies, um, you'll see that this student, um, demo student, is in the middle. They have been given a paragraph and they are answering questions over the paragraph that was read in the previous lesson. So, you'll see that it will come up with social studies and it says, what are you learning today? So it gives a little plan. So this student is currently in the module called Changing People in Places. And there are four questions. How do people and places change over time? How do we learn more about history, traditions connecting with the past, and vocabulary lesson review? So this student has four assignments or four uh, activities that they're working on. So let's take the last two minutes and see what the student sees. Check for understanding. Now, let's click here. Oops. That's here. See. So check for understanding. We're checking to understand that history is the study of the past. The past includes everything that happened before today. The present includes events that are happening now. And history shows us some things that change and some things that stay the same. This was in the previous paragraph and questions that students answered before check for understanding. And check for understanding occurs at the end of each section. History helps us look at how places have changed over time. Imagine the town you live in. Do you think it looked the same 100 years ago? What about 500 years ago? Most likely, your town did not exist 500 years ago. Click on the buttons below to learn more about how places can change over time. Now, the Read Aloud is a feature that you can turn on for your entire class or for selected students. It is currently set so that all students have read aloud. It is a great accommodation for students for GEI, or for students with IEPs, or just students that you know need that read aloud accommodation. So let's click here. So we're looking at this picture. Now we're going to look at Seattle in 2011, and let's compare and contrast those two pictures. And then we can do the play button. Notice how different the same street looks 111 years later. New trees were planted, cars have replaced the train, and many more buildings were built. 
And notice at the bottom that it shows that we're on problem 7 of 34. So I'm going to click the green arrow. The town you live in is also home to your community. A community is made up of people living and working in the same place. When places change, communities change, too. Click the buttons below to see an example of how a community can change. So let's look at 1990. So we have a picture of 1990 and 2004. And again, I can hit the play button. In 14 years, Dubai changed from mostly dirt roads and fields to a big city with many people. The city has become a popular place for people to go on vacation. How do communities change over time? Click the buttons below to see some ways a community can change. So you'll notice that this, are, that this has a very interactive feature. And again, I clicked on the picture. New roads are built which allow people to get to new places. New buildings and businesses are built which create new places for people to shop and work. So I'll come down here. New houses and apartments are built which give people new places to live. People's homes and businesses also change looks and locations. So it says these changes over, happen over time. They do not happen all at once. So I'm going to click the arrow. Communities are blank. So you'll see there's a question over what was just read. And so students will answer with their correct choice. And you'll notice down at the bottom, it's also saying earn double game points. So there's some incentive um, to answer the questions correctly. People who live and work in the same place make up the community. Changes that happen in a place also change the community. Places change blank. When a place changes, so does its blank. So you'll see drop down. So places change over time. When a place changes, so does its community. And you'll notice for my grade three through fifth grade teacher friends, You'll see that these look very similar because on the state assessment, they do have drop downs. So not only are they practicing the skill, but it also gives them a bit of practice for state assessment. It takes time for places to change. Sometimes we will not notice changes for a while. It might take years for us to realize that places have changed. When places change, so does the community that is located there. So we are going to stop there in the student view, but when I noticed that when I came out and I came back in, it started where I left off on problem seven. So I want to go over just a few icons before we move to the teacher site. If you go to the very top, you'll see the first three lines. It'll be sound and zoom so students can zoom in closer. You'll see assigned. I assigned five minutes and I've actually been in for eight minutes. And of those eight minutes, I've been focused for seven of those eight minutes. And then we also see a table of contents, which shows, as we scroll, all 34 questions. So you can see where you are in relation to those questions. So table of contents. So now we are going to move over to the teacher side so that I can show you some features in Moby Max, as well as the social studies program to customize for your students. So when you log in as a teacher account, you will see the same sign in screen underneath the word sign in you'll see as a student. The next one to the right is as a teacher that is the one that you will choose. Then parents can log in a school administrator and a district administrator. You will log in as a teacher. I, however, am going to log in as a district administrator. But again, you will use the teacher sign in. I was in teacher, so I've got to be over here for district. So just a note, make sure you sign in in the right place. We'll try that again. Don't make the mistake I did. Oh, good. 
goodness gracious, got to type everything correctly there. All right, so don't do that. Now, mine is going to look a little bit different because I have multiple schools. So I'm going to click here, and when you go in, you're going to see your students. And so I'm going to come over here to my demo student. When you log in, you are going to see on the left hand side, you'll see blue links that you can click to. And then you will also see um, a purple box with three um, different areas. The first one says differentiated learner. It has the green book with some bubbles. That's the one that we are working in right now. Quick checker and interactive class will be items that we will get to um, once school starts, but we are going to focus in the differentiated learning tab. Now, over to the right hand side, we are, or left hand side, we are in the home screen. And over here, if you click the one that says my modules, it's going to show you all the modules that you have access to. You can manage those favorites and you can click just what you want. If you're a social studies teacher um, in the middle school, you probably want to just click social studies, which is right down here towards the bottom. I have on reading as well, but you can customize and have anything that you want show up in the top hand corner. If we come over here um, and I want you to go down to the gray tab that says tools and I want you to click on the first blue one that says assign lessons. So if you need to assign lessons to your students, you can search. So if I search geography, it is going to come up with all the geography assignments for the, uh, for the modules in Moby Mac. So you'll notice here I have a first grade geography, second grade geography, third grade. It shows me the number of problems and the lesson topics. So let's say I'm a fourth grade teacher and I want to assign intro to geography and I also want to go back and just review second grade skills. I can assign any of those modules and then I'll get to a screen and you can determine who do you want to assign it to. It can be all students or it can be just a select student. So let's say I just wanted to assign this to Oprah. I could do that. Um, and then this is just where would you like to place lessons in the student sequence. So if you remember that page when we logged in as a student, it had assignments listed. When Oprah logs in, she will be able to see that assignment. So it's as simple as that to assign modules. So let's go back to the home screen using the home button. Another tool that you may use is roster. So if you click on roster, these students will auto assign to you, be assigned to your rosters. But let's say you get a new student that comes in after a few weeks of school and you need that student to get started. It's as simple as this. Click on register student and then you'll begin typing. So I put in that information and let's say that is a fifth grade student. And notice that it generates the username and the password for you. Moby Max suggests that you have student ID, so this is what we're doing for now. And when we finish, you'll see that Sarah Daniels has been added to my roster. So that's as simple as it is to add students. And notice that we now shows all of our students' username, passwords, and grade levels. And students can be assigned to more than one classroom. So if you're doing something with intervention or you're doing something for additional practice or work, a student can be assigned to multiple classes. So that means um, that, a, that two different teachers can put the same student in their classrooms. So let's go back to home for just a moment. And it says that I successfully registered a student. So down at the uh, next part where it says help, if you go to PD videos, you can come down here and watch a video over any of the programs. There's also a social studies video that is about eight minutes that you can watch. And you can click on it right here, Moby Max Social Studies, and you can watch that PD video. 
Now, let's go here. We are always going to go to the differentiated learner. So you're going to go to the green go, and it's going to take you to this page. And again, we have on the left-hand side the same quick access that we did before. If you go to the purple box over on the far right-hand side, you'll see icon list, which is what I am currently in. And you can also go to list with words. Now, again, we have roster setting, exactly the same setup, it just is your preference. And please note that there is more than one way to get to any program within Moby Max. We can go from the quick access or we can go from the icons. So let's click on social studies. It is um, in the second row, the very last one to the far right. It's got a green background with a globe and it says social studies underneath. So let's click on this. So when we log in, you will see this student demo demo is the student that I was just showing you and I was logged in as. It says that I have been in for a total of 10 minutes. I have 82% of my problems correct and I was focused 100% of the time. I can come over here to progress and I can click on this student and you'll notice that it says that I was started at a second grade level and I'm ending at a second grade level with the work that I've completed so far. It'll also show you what lesson students are in. You'll notice earlier when I assigned uh, something to Oprah, it is still not, it is still showing up right here that I assigned that to her. Um, short answers. You also have the option to have students do short answers and you can um, grade those. Goals and IEPs. So if you're using this to track uh, students or for GEI plan or something like that, I'm not sure that you would do it for social studies, but you might, especially in middle school. And then you can go to the library and this will help you to see all the, all the lessons within a specific grade. So again, notice that um, I went to fourth grade and it shows all of my fourth grade lessons. So I could select and assign from there. There's also an option to print worksheets. So you have the ability to print worksheets from here. So I am gonna go back to my home button and it's gonna take me back to my main page. I'm gonna click on social studies again. And I'm gonna click on the settings for this student. Now, I am just in for this student. Um, I also can do this for the whole class and I'll show you that. Um, in just a moment. So here I'm under social studies and I'm going to go to profile and it's going to show me that I am changing the settings for this one student. And I'm going to go to general settings, turning sound on or off. Now I currently have it on for all students. Um, and if you turn, you can turn it on or off for individual students. I always suggest turning it on it is a great accommodation. You can also uh, change the passing score. So let's say I have a, I want to change it to 80%. I can do that. Or let's say I have a particular student who I know hurries through and says, if I get a 70% or 90%, that's good enough. You can change this for one student and change it to 90%. Idle practice time, two minutes. Show short answer examples to students as feedback so we can uh, give feedback as well. And we can always refer back to our settings. So let's go ahead and just go back there. Now, if I go into modules, notice that I'm in social studies. And so now I can come over here and I can automatically assign lessons, daily effort goal. So set number of skills for daily goal. Um, I have that set at five, I could change that to three, I could change it to seven. Um, it depends on the needs of your students. And again, you can change that for one student or for all students. And I can also set a time. So I can say I want students to work for five minutes. And read, play read aloud. Let's say I had a student I wanted to turn it off for, I could, and I can turn it back on that easy. And that's how I can change my settings. You will then hit the X and close out of it and it will save 
the settings that you have set for your student or students. So now I want to show you another way to change your settings for students or class. So I am back at my home page and I'm on my left hand side where it has all of my quick links. And I want to go down to the one, two, three, four, fifth one that says teacher admin. And you'll see roster and settings. Please click settings. So you'll see at the top where it says default setting for all students or individual student settings. This is another way to do that. So I can click here and I can then change the setting for one student. So if I come over here and I set my default for all students, notice that all students will have sound. All students I want to change. Let's say I want to change my passing score to 80. Again, I can automatically um, assign lessons. And I can come over here and I can allow students to earn certificates. Um, motivate with game time for students. So I can come over here and I can say, students earn one minute of game time for every eight minutes. For the younger students, you may want to make that five or six at the beginning. Whereas in middle school, maybe you want to increase that to 10 minutes. So you can customize that however you want. Bonus seconds earned for each problem correct. You can do one problem or you can do two problems. And students must earn how many minutes of game time to unlock a new game. So again, you can change this. And if you are working with younger students, I would decrease that time. Middle school students, you could keep that about 20. And again, short answers, so all short answers. And then it's automatically going to say my work or my settings. And again, we can come over here and we'll see social studies and we'll see this. We can also assign students grade levels. So if a student is in fourth grade and we want to assign them what fourth grade work, we can do that. Or if it's a fourth grader and we want to assign, you know, if it's for the class, I could do it at fourth grade. If it's an individual student, perhaps I want to set that individual student for third grade. And that's how you change your settings for your students. Again, if I wanted to change settings for an individual student, I would click the second option that says individual student setting. And then I would come up here, click the student and update settings. And then I'm going to go back in. And for John, let's say I want his passing score to be 95. So I can now change that score just for John. And then I can save and close. And if all else fails and you get stuck, always click on the little home icon that's in the green bar and over on the right hand side. And that will take you back. So that is how to get to social studies and to change your settings. And again, notice that there are interactive features that students will use. You can customize lessons to your grade level and particular needs in your classroom and also what aligns best to the CVMs. So I hope that this has been a valuable overview of Moby Max Social Studies.